Hello friends, welcome to Fierce Club Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will discuss very important current affairs of 24th of February 2022. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you have to download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily, you will see three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Most important section is the monthly and we are providing four type of PDFs. One is detail, second is question and answer format, third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and fourth one is pocket PDF which means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. It means if you want to cover one particular topic, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you're a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. And we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ASH10. And if you have any query, you can email us or you can call us on this number or email ID. So let's start 24th of February 2022 current fairs. But first of all, you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. Here is the first and the only question in the most important section who became the first cricketer to score triple century in the first class debut match and this match was played in the Ranji trophy of 2021-22 and answer of this question is Sakibul Ghani. So answer of this question is D and he hails from Bihar. It means he belongs to Bihar. So Shakibul Ghani, an Indian cricketer hailing from Motihari in Bihar, created a world record by becoming the first cricketer to score triple century on his debut match in the Ranji Trophy of 2021-22. You can also see here the picture of Shakibul Ghani. He scored 341 runs with 405 balls representing Bihar in the Ranji Trophy of 2021-22 and this match was against Mizoram team. So you have to just remember the question as same as in slide. First cricketer to score triple century in the debut match and this is Saki Bulgani and this match was played in the Ranji Trophy of 2021-22. Now move into the very important question section but first of all like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram channel from the description box link. Here is the question. What is the name of manned underwater submersible vehicle which will be used for Smundaryan mission? Two questions are under this question. One is the name of this manned underwater submersible vehicle and second is what is Smundaryan mission? The name of this vehicle is Matsya 6000. So answer of this question is D. And it is indigenously developed manned underwater submersible vehicle. It is known as Matsya 6000. And uh, you have to remember very important thing that this is capable of taking three humans to the depth of 6000 meter. That's why it is known as Matsya 6000. And it will be ready as for its launch in second quarter of 2024 for this Mundarian mission. And Matsya 6000 is a of 2.1 meter in diameter with titanium alloy personal sphere of 80 mm thickness and uses a battery powered propulsion which can reach a maximum depth of 6000 meter. So maximum depth is 6000 meter. 
and it has the operational capacity of 12 hours and during emergencies it can operate up to 96 hours for deep ocean exploration and you can also remember that this Matsya 6000 you can also see here the picture Matsya 6000 is an undersea submersible vehicle designed by the Indian Space Research Organization and it is developed by Ministry of Earth Sciences under the Deep Ocean Mission under the Deep Ocean Mission now the question arises what is Sundaryan mission so in October 2021, Union Minister of State, Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Jitender Singh Ji, launched India's first and unique manned ocean mission named as Sumundaryan, which aims to send humans for deep sea exploration. And by the launch of Sumundaryan mission, India will join the elite club of the countries that includes United States of America, Russia, France, Japan and China. But you have to remember who is the Union Minister, Union Minister of Earth Sciences is Dr. Jitender Singh. Dr. Jitender Singh constituency is Udampur and Udampur is in Jammu and Kashmir. So you have to remember all the things, what is Matsya 6000, who developed Matsya 6000 and what is Sundaryan mission. These three things are very important under this question. Move into next question. A book titled A Nation to Protect, authored by whom? So the name of the book is very important, The Nation to Protect. And this book is written by Priyam Gandhi Modi. So answer of this question is C. So Priyam Gandhi Modi authored a nation to protect a book about the leadership of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi tackling the COVID-19 crisis. You can also see a very beautiful cover page in nation to protect leading India through the COVID crisis. And this book is written by Priyam Gandhi Modi. And it also speaks of about Modi's view on India to follow Atam Nirbhar Bharat or self-reliance without depending on foreign vaccine manufacturers. So the book was launched by Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia ji. And the book speaks about Mansukh Mandavia's role of fertilizers ministers during the second wave of COVID-19 by ensuring proper supplies of essential medicines during the COVID-19 and remdesivir injection. So this is very, very important. And this Priyam Gandhi Modi is very famous author and she also wrote so many books about the politics. So that's why you have to remember the name and name is very easy. Like Gandhi and Modi, you can just remember these two names, Priyam Gandhi Modi. But you can also remember the other authors here, Pradeep Magazine. You have to remember because he wrote a book about cricket and this is captioned as not just cricket, not just cricket, a reporter's journey. Next is Gautam Chintamani. He wrote a book about uh, Modiji and the name is The Midway Battle. The Midway Battle. And the caption of this book is Modi's Roller Coaster Second Term. It means this book tells us, us about the Modiji Second Term which started in the year of 2019. Dr. A. Surya Prakash, he wrote a book about democracy, politics and governance. And this is also the title Democracy, Politics and Governance. Now we are moving to the next question. Union Minister for Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Shri Girira Singh Ji, launched Prime Minister Avash Yojana Gramin dashboard. And this dashboard is to monitor the implementation of this scheme, which is known as Prime Minister Avash Yojana Gramin. And you can also see here, it provides end-to-end -end insights regarding the physical and the financial progress of the Prime Minister Avash Yojana Gramin scheme just at a glance. And the portal has been developed on the lines of government policy of zero tolerance against corruption by the National Informatics Center of Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology to provide complete transparency in the implementation of Prime Minister Avas Yojana Gramin. And this will cut the need of spending a large amount of time reviewing and analyzing different reports to get the desired information. Because now you have to just log into this portal or this dashboard and you can get all the information about all the projects which are going under the Prime Minister Avash Yojana Gramin. So it will help in analyzing the gap and delays in the release of installment, speed of house construction, age-wise, categories-wise data analysis to find any type of the anomalies. So this is very kind of thing which was started by the government of India. But the most important thing, what is this Prime Minister Avas Yojana Gramin? So this scheme was launched in the year of 2016 and Prime Minister Avas Yojana Gramin is a revamped rural housing program which was earlier named as Indra Avas Yojana. Indra Avas Yojana and it was started in the year of 1996. And Prime Minister Avas Yojana Gramin was introduced to boost the housing for all concept. Housing for all concept and the program emphasized the completion of 2.95 crore Prime Minister Avas Yojana Gramin houses with all basic amenities by the year of 2024. This is the target. 
and as on the 21st of February 2022, a total of 1.73 crore houses have been completed against the allocated cumulative target of 2.62 crore houses. But you have to remember who is the Union Minister of uh, Rural Development and Panchayati Raj? It is Giriraj Singh and constituency is Begu Sarai. Begu Sarai and Begu Sarai is in Bihar. Moving to next question. Which state launched mentorship program known as Project Arohan? So just remember the keyword Project Arohan and this is started by the state of Assam. So answer of this question is D. So Himant Biswa Sharma who is the Chief Minister of Assam recently launched this project which is known as Project Arohan. And it is a four year mentorship program named as Project Arohan and it is to mentor the students of Assam and to hone their skills. It means just to improve their skills. And Himant Biswa Sharma, who is the Chief Minister of Assam, met with Anita Ranjan. Anita Ranjan. Remember the name if you want. Anita Ranjan is currently the CEO of Tata Strive Program. Tata Strive Program. It is the skill development initiative of the Tata Trust to seek, to seek cooperation for Project Arohan. So just remember, this is the state of Assam and the name of the project is Project Arohan. And uh, Assam Chief Minister is Himant Biswa Sharma. And you can also remember the governor. Governor is Jagdish Makhi, who has also the additional charge of Nagaland state. Moving to next question. Shama Prashad Mukherjee, Rurban Mission, was in news. It was launched in which year? So recently, on 21st of February 2022, this marked the sixth anniversary of launch of Shama Prashad Mukherjee, Rurban Mission, undertaken by the Ministry of Rural Development. So it comes under the Ministry of Rural Development. So this project was started or this scheme was started in the year of 2016. So, so far the Ministry of Rural Development has approved 296 clusters under the Shama Prashad Mukherjee Rurban Mission. So this is the 6th anniversary of the launch of Shama Prashad Mukherjee Rurban Mission because it was launched in the year of 2016 and uh, it was launched on 21st of February 2016 by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And it was launched with an aim to develop 300 urban clusters in India by provisioning economic, social and physical infrastructure facilities. Until date, Ministry of Rural Development has approved 296 clusters out of 300 urban clusters. So the main objective is to stimulate local economic development, enhance basic services and create well-planned urban clusters. So this is very important. And there will be two categories of clusters under this scheme. One is non-tribal, second is tribal. So now the question arises, what is the meaning of this urban cluster? Urban cluster is a cluster of geographical village with a population of around 25,000 to 50,000 in plain and the coastal areas and within a population of 5,000 to 15,000 in the desert, hilly or the tribal areas. So this is known as urban cluster. And the urban clusters are identified across the rural areas of India, which shows the increasing sign of urbanization. And the mission aims to transform the urban clusters by stimulating local economic development, enhancing basic services, creating well-planned urban cluster. So this is the meaning of urban cluster. So just remember, this is Shama Prashad Mukherjee urban mission. Total 300 urban clusters will be developed and 296 till date passed by the Ministry of Rural Development because it comes under the Ministry of Rural Development. We already covered that who is the Union Minister of Rural Development. Now we are moving to the next question. Trip Money and which bank has partnered to launch a rupee dominated secure credit card which is known as Trip Money Global Card. So just remember the name of the card. It is Trip Money Global Card. And remember Trip Money is a financial arm of the Make My Trip. Make My Trip. And this bank is SBM Bank. Answer of this question is D. So it is to provide by Visa that can be used across 150 countries. 150 countries. So Make My Trips financial technological arm which is known as Trip Money partners with SMM Bank to launch global credit card. And the card offers multiple value added benefits including zero forex markup, lifetime free validity and 100% digital in app card management. And the customers can load money in this card in the Indian rupee as security and also track balance in the Indian rupees. And the card has been designed with several built in advanced security features such as instant lock and unlock through the mobile application while traveling. And the card mainly focuses on international travels including the student population who prefer lifestyle benefits with advanced digital money management features. And card holders can avail offers up to Rs 70,000 on Make My Trip 
and go ibbo on flights hotels and the holidays so this card is launched by make my trip or you can say trip money and this bank who will provide this card or the financial assistant this is sbi bank and this is powered by visa but you can also remember about sbi bank sbi bank was established in the year of 1994 its headquarters is in mumbai and managing director and ceo is siddharth rath siddharth rath moving to next question which country will dispatch first batch of 3 mh 60r multi role helicopters to india so the first batch of 3 mh 60r multi role helicopters are expected to arrive in india in the month of july 2022 in kochi kerala and this will be delivered by united states of america so answer of this question is c so you can see here first batch of 3 mh 60r multi role helicopters to arrive in the mid july of 2022 and these three helicopters were already handed over by the united states in 2021 in 2021 but indian pilots were using these helicopters for the training purpose in san diego and the florida of united states of america so they will operate from frontline ships and aircraft carriers and provide better surveillance crucial traits of flexibility and assault capacity of india so this is very important specially to enhance the security of india and indian navy will likely to purchase six kamov ka 31 airborne and early warning helicopters from russia so this is very important and this statement is given by defense acquisition council and these helicopters were expected to be deployed on indigenous aircraft ins vikrant ins vikrant it will definitely enhance the security of the coastline of india and you can also remember about this mh60r in 2020 India signed 2.2 billion dollar deal 2.2 billion dollar deal for MS60R helicopters it will be built by Lockheed Martin Lockheed Martin company during the visit of the former United States president Donald Trump this agreement was signed and all deliverables will be completed by the year of 2025 2025 so you have to remember this question as same as in slide 3 ms60r this keyword is important here and this will be delivered by united states of america and all deliveries will be completed by the year of 2025 and this is 2.2 billion dollar deal which was signed when united states president donald trump visited india and this will be built by lockheed martin lockheed martin very important aerospace company of united states of america Moving to next question, which bank has introduced a new service named as S I B E R Net or Cyber Net? So by the name you can guess this is South Indian Bank. So answer of this question is B South Indian Bank. So it is outward remittance services which is known as Cyber Net. So you can see here South Indian Bank introduces two new services for the customer. One is remittance to and second is remittance from service. So South Indian Bank has introduced two new services by enabling CyberNet and SIB Express to enhance both remittance to means outward remittance and remittance from which is known as inward remittance it means this CyberNet basically belongs to outward remittance so any resident indian customer can initiate online foreign outward remittance 24 into 7 online including on holidays in usd currency through internet banking platform which is known as cybernet in more than 100 currencies across the globe and this outward remittance request in other currencies can initiated during market hours and under this liberalized remittance scheme reserve bank of india permits resident individuals to remit up to 2 lakh 50000 or equivalent in other currencies in a financial year this was recently increased by the reserve bank of india and second service services in what remittance or sib express so the bank introduced another service which is known as sib express which will enable non resident indians to send money to send money to their relatives or their own non resident external account or you can say nro account in india instantly through npca upi mode so if you want to transfer money to india then you can use this upi mode and the facilities partner exchange houses with cross border inward remittance under the rupee droy agreement so you have to just remember one is outward remittance service this is known as cybernet second is inward remittance service which is known as sib express so you can also remember about south indian bank south indian bank was started in the year of 1946 headquarters is in thrissur in kerala and its managing director and ceo is murli ramakrishna murli Rama Krishna so very interesting name Murli Rama Krishna 
move it to next question recently national status is provided to upper badra project and this project belongs to which state so the keyword underlined here upper badra project and this belongs to state of karnataka so d is the answer so karnataka chief minister basavraj bommai ji announced the upper badra project has given the national project status by the center government high powered committee and this becomes the first project in karnataka to get this national project status now what is the meaning of this national project status this change in the status will enable karnataka to receive 12500 crore grant from the center and could transform central karnataka from being water scarce to water rich state so this is very important and upper badra project is a major lift irrigation scheme under the implementation in the center region of karnataka state which is being undertaken by bisheshwaray jal nigam limited and former chief minister b s yadirappa ji had laid the foundation stone of this upper badra project in the year of 2008 to make karnataka water rich state by utilizing the access water available in the krishna river and kaveri basins effectively so the main objective is to provide sustainable irrigation facility in the kharif season in the kharif season or monsoon season and to recharge the ground water table with fewer chemical containments like fluoride and you have to remember Karnataka's governor is Thavarchand Gehlot Thavarchand Gehlot and chief minister is Basavraj Bommai we already covered this and you can also remember very important national parks are there Anshi national park is there Bandipur national park is there Baner Gatta is there Kudremukh national park is there Nagar Hole national park is there Kali Tiger Reserve is there Dandheli Tiger Reserve is there so these are very very important in Karnataka move into next question Which bank has collaborated with Indore Clean Energy Private Limited to fund the largest bio CNG plant of Asia? This is very important, and this bank is HDFC. Answer of this question is A, because recently we covered one question that uh, the largest bio CNG plant in Asia is located in Indore, and it was inaugurated by Modi ji. And this is one of the CNG CNG Gobardhan plant, and this is largest in Asia, and HDFC Bank will fund this project. So HDFC Bank finances Asia's largest waste to energy plant, which is situated in Indore, and this is the largest waste to energy project funded by HDFC under the Environment, Social, and Governance commitments. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually inaugurated this Gobardhan plant to treat 550 tons per day of wet organic waste and produce 17,000 17,000 kg per day of CNG and 100 tons per day of organic compost. and it is to mitigate the adverse effects of climate change and make the bank carbon neutral by the 2031 32 that's why hdfc is financing and the plant is expected to treat 50% of municipal waste generated in the indore city and convert 100% green products like biogas and manure because this will produce 17000 of the cng per day and 100 tons per day of organic compost so this is very useful especially for the indore city and especially to achieve the green targets of india by the year of 2030 and also the sustainable development goals target by the year of 2030 moving to next question japan international cooperation agency approved 1000 crore for cleaning up of which river so again static question this is japan international cooperation agency and this organization approved the tender or 1000 crore rupees for rivers mula and mutha and also the confluence of mula and mutha so answer of this question is both a and b for pune municipal corporation area so this is jika green signal for pune's 1000 crore river clean up project and these two rivers are mula and mutha so the main objective is to improve water quality by augmenting sewage collection system sewage treatment facilities and improving sanitation in the pune municipal corporation area so the mula and mutha are the most polluted rivers in the cities of pune which later meets krishna river in the western ghats and finally empties into the bay of bengal and zika will provide assistance to mitigate pollution of mula and mutha and the confluence of mula mutha and living conditions of the localities so just remember the question as same as in slide moving to next question researchers discovered euphictus jaldara from western coastal plains it is a species of frog answer of this question is b you have to remember it is euphictus jaldara euphictus jaldara and the researchers discovered this frog species from the fresh water bodies of the western coastal plains of india and the frog was first spotted in the fresh water bodies around the uh, 30th bird century 
you can remember the name Thattikar Bird Sanctuary in Ernakulam district of the Kerala in 2017 but later multiple populations were identified all, all along the western coastal plain from Kerala to Gujarat. So this is a species of frog and you can also see here the species of frog, new frog species discovered along the western guard. Uh, scientifically it is known as Euphlictus jaldara. Remember the name, remember the species. Next is Chief of Army Staff General M.M. M. Narwaneji presented President's Colour to four para battalions. So, Chief of Army Staff General Manoj Mukun Narwaneji on behalf of the President of India Ramnath Kovindji presented this presidential colour or Nishan to four parachute, parachute battalions. And these four parachute battalions are 11 para, this is special force, 21 para, 23 para and 29 para. And the first presidential colour was presented to the Indian Navy. Remember, Indian Navy in 1951 by Dr. Rajendra Prashad, the then President of India. And the presidential colour or Nishan is one of the greatest honour and meritorious award presented to the military unit in recognition of exceptional service rendered to the nation during war and in peace. Even in September 2021, the presidential colour was awarded to Indian Naval Aviation. Indian Naval Aviation. So, moving to next question, again it is from picture, Malayalam actor KPAC Lalitha passed away. So, national award winning veteran Malayalam actress known as Maheshwari Amma, the real name is Maheshwari Amma who was also known as KPAC Lalitha has passed away in Kerala and Maheshwari Amma started his career as a theatre artist and Kerala's People Art Club. He has starred in 500 films and she has also acted in Tamil films. And she has also served as the chairperson of Kerala Sangeet Natak Academy and she has won two national film awards for the best sporting actress. And she has also won four Kerala state film awards for the second best actress. So this is all about the KPS Lalitha or you can say the name is, the real name is Maheshwari Amma. Moving to next section, it is an important question section but first of all you have to like this video, you have to share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. Here is the question, government approved the continuation of national means come merit scholarship for a period of 5 years. So this is by the recommendations of the 15th finance commission. So all the schemes, maximum schemes are basically continued till the date of the March 2026. So the main objective is to award economically weaker students who are meritorious in order to reduce dropouts at the 8th grade and to encourage them to continue their education at the secondary stage. And you can see here, government approves the continuation of national means come merit scholarship scheme for a time period of 5 years. You can also remember, it intends to provide scholarship to 14.76 lakh students with financial outlay of 1827 crore that holds minor changes in the eligibility criteria such as increasing income ceiling because the income ceiling under the eligibility criteria for the scholarship has been changed from 1.5 lakh per annum to 3.5 lakh per annum and the renewal category or the criteria under scheme were also revised. So all the students who want scholarship are selected for a scholarship through an exam conducted by the state as well as the union territory government and the student must have a minimum of 55% marks or equivalent grade in the class 7th examination for appearing in the selection test for a award of scholarship and it is relaxable by 5% for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe student. It means for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe it is 50% and every year 1 lakh fresh scholarships of almost 12,000 per annum or 1000 rupees per month per student will be provided for students in class 9th with the possibility of continuation or renewal in class 10th and 12th for study at a state government, government aided and the local body institutions. And the student should be studying as a regular student in the government and government aided and the local body school. So there are three conditions. One is if the income is 3.5 lakh per annum or less than 3.5 lakh per annum then you are eligible for this scholarship you have to attain 55% at least marks in the class 7th exam or 50% if you belongs to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe category so that you can appear in exam. If you clear this exam, then you can get the scholarship of 1000 rupees per month for the class 9th as well as for the class 10th and 12th if you want to study in the state government schools, government aided and the local body institution. So this is the scheme. And since its inception because it was launched in the year of 2008-9, 22.06 lakh scholarships have been sanctioned till the year of 2020-21 at a total cost of 1783 crore rupees. 
and this is a central sector scheme with 100% funding by the center government and the student will receive the scholarship directly into their bank account through the electronic transfer by public financial management system in the direct benefit transfer mode. And this is by the Ministry of Education and Union Minister is Dharmendra Pradhan, currently Rajya Sabha member from Madhya Pradesh. I think all the points, all the important points are covered under this question. Moving to next question and the last question. Which insurance company partnered with Ashraf Finance for MSME loan protection plan? And this is Adelvi's Journal Insurance. So answer of this question is D. So digital insurer Adelvi's Journal Insurance has collaborated with Ashraf Finance, which is a technological based NBFC to provide financial protection to the loan debtors of the Ashraf Finance. So Adelvi's Journal Insurance partnered with this company for the MSME loan protection plan. So now what is the role of Ashraf Finance and what is the role of this insurance company? So Ashraf will offer timely credit to the small businesses or MSMEs or you can say micro, small and medium enterprises. Why Edelvis General Insurance will provide health insurance cover to all the customers of Ashraf Finance in all major cities across the country. And the policy will provide security against the business loan taken in case of borrower has an unfortunate incident or accident or critical illness. And the business loan and the insurance policy will be processed together digitally with a zero paperwork. So you can remember about Edelweiss General Insurance if you want. Its uh, managing director and CEO is uh, Shanai Ghosh. Shanai Ghosh and its headquarters is in Mumbai. Moving to next question. It is our one-liner important point and the first point we already covered that uh, Jika approved rupees 1000 crore project for cleanup uh, of rivers of Mula and Mutha in the Pune already covered. Next, AEPC, it is April Export Promotion Council observed 44th Foundation Day on 22nd of February 2022 and it is projected that India's textile export can increase from current $40 billion to $100 billion in the next 5 years. It means we have to increase $20 billion export every year and uh, this AEPC is the official body of April Exports in India under the Ministry of Textile which provides invaluable assistance to the Indian exporters as well as importers or the international buyers and its chairman chairman of this body is Narendra Goenka Narendra Goenka next LIC acquires 0.085 percent additional stake in the Capri Global uh, Capital so uh, earlier the stake was 4.959 percent but now it is 5.044 percent and Capri Global Capital Limited is a non-banking financial company listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange as well as on the National Stock Exchange. And remember, LIC chairman is MR Kumar, whose time period recently exceeded by one year. Next is Ministry of Women and Child Development extends PM Cares for Children scheme till 28th of February 2022. Earlier, it was ended on 31st of December 2021. So this is extended by Ministry of Women and Child Development. But first of all, you have to remember what is the meaning of this PM Cares. It means Prime Minister Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situation Fund. And it covers all the children who have not completed 18 years of age at the time of death of their parents, surviving parent, legal guardian, adoptive parents or single adoptive parent due to COVID-19 pandemic. And this scheme started on 11th of March 2020. Now it will end on 28th of February 2022. And it provides support through the GAAP funding for ensuring education, health, monthly stipend from the age of 18 years. And uh, around worth rupees 10 lakh of aid assistance will be provided to the beneficiary on attaining the age of 23 years of age. So uh, remember, Ministry of Women and Child Development comes under Samriti Irani, uh, constituencies Amethi, Uttar Pradesh. Next, first batch of three MS-60R helicopters will arrive in the mid-July of 2022 and we purchased it from United States of America, already covered. 11th World Pangolin Day observed on 9th of February 2022. So, uh, you have to remember that uh, World Pangolin Day is annually observed across the globe, not on 19th February every year. It is observed on 3rd of Saturday, 3rd of Saturday of February. And the day aims to create awareness about the pangolins, a unique endangered mammal and their plight. And pangolin covered with the hard plate-like scales made of keratin feed on ants and termites. And eight species of pangolins are found in Africa and Asia. Four in Africa and four in Asia. Moving to the question of the day. What is the question of 23rd of February? What percentage of loans by a particular bank has to be provided to the priority sector as mandated by the RBI? So there are so many categories under the priority sector like agriculture, housing, education, social infrastructure, 
renewable energy, export credit, MSMEs and others. So according to the RBI, 40%, 40% of the loans should be given to the priority sector and it is mandated by the RBI. Moving to the question of the day, question of the day is rupiah in our country was introduced by which ruler? So you have to tell me answer in the comment box. This is static question and very important question. But you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible. And please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link and press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time. It is a fierce cloud. Promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section. Definitely don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy like this smiley. Thank you guys. Take care and bye-bye.